Uh, what's up guys? Um, I'm not sure which day it is. This is this is Friday before Memorial Day and I officially went back to work two weeks ago. So this is the second Friday that I've returned to work after being off of work for two weeks. So it's been a month pretty much. I guess that puts it at a month since I had my heart attack four weeks and uh, I feel good. Like I tell people constantly that ask me, and if you've, I've probably said this in my videos like a thousand times, but I literally feel better than before I had it. So it's almost like I could say it's a blessing in disguise. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it really kind of forced me to look at my bad um, lifestyle habits and make a change to them. So I'm gonna, I don't know if I mentioned this Man, I just can't remember. The stuff runs together and things go through my brain like crazy. Um, the last time I had homework from cardio rehab, they said that they wanted me at that point, this was probably a week or half a week ago, they wanted me to try to do, it said on the paper, 35 to 40 minutes of, um, of walking when I go walking. And what that means is um, continual walking. So it means that um, whenever I, the way I do it is I set my phone timer for half of what the target is. So uh, the first time I'd set it for 20 minutes, which it is this time, by the way, I'm back to 20 minutes, but I set it for 20 minutes. And that means I walk in any trajectory from my house until the alarm goes off, the timer goes off. And that means that I've walked half of my path. So wherever I'm at, I just stop and I turn around and I start walking back in the direction that I came from and go the reverse path. So that's how I do it to be sure I'm exactly hitting my target. And I walk at the same path. Like I couldn't tell you the speed. If I was on a treadmill, it's probably like 2.6, you know, something like that. It's not three. It might be three and I just don't know. But either way, I just go at what I consider a brisk pace. And you guys can hear me. Like it's fast enough that to talk to y'all and to walk has me almost winded. You know, I, I can't have a smooth voice conversation at this pace, which is good. I need, I need to put a little bit of stress on me, not too much stress, but it, it's not, it's good. But um, anyways, when I did it the first time, I probably got, if, if I was trying to think on it, now that I know what I know, it was probably shortly after the 30 minute mark. So I remember where I was physically, but I can't remember how many minutes I had left to get home. But I got to a point where I felt the wall. Now I felt this wall before because, by the way, I've got the earbuds in again and they're noise canceling. And so I see cars going by and I'm, the interstate's over here. I live close to the interstate. So I'm sorry that uh, it might be noisy for you guys. As soon as I get up a cutaway street, I'll go up that street. Um, but it, I got to that point where it was pretty much the wall and the wall I've experienced before because a long, couple of years ago I did keto and I, it felt like the carb wall. Like whenever you hit the wall where you run out of carbs and you're just tired. It could have been that. Hey, and I told all this to the nurse, by the way, at Cardio Rehab, but it could have been something else. Um, it could have easily been that too because I, I don't eat a ton of calories um, through the day. And especially by the time I've go, I go walking, when I finally eat at work, it's usually 12 o'clock. I get into work at anywhere from 6 to 7 o'clock, and I don't eat food. I'm extending my intermittent fast. And at first, it was accidental. Like, literally, at first, I just was never hungry. Um, and so I, I just didn't even want to eat because it made me feel just kind of, you know, nauseous just a little. And I, I guess this is coming out of surgery when your body's trying to heal, like, I'm assuming and you just don't want to eat so I didn't eat and then I would just drink my teas and, and one cup of coffee a day is all I'm allowing myself and so I, it could have been that I was low in calories is the point because normally I'll eat a larger bulk of my calories for supper and I stop eating at about 8 p.m. so from the morning time I can feel that wind now I know there's a good little breeze the morning time I don't eat until noon and sometimes one I literally one time one time it was 1 30 
you consider that, it's anywhere from a 16, it's at least a 12 hour fast before eating, and, some, and most of the time a 16 hour. In fact, it's always at least a 16, maybe 15. But, and, and also, I don't know if you guys know, the theory behind intermittent fasting, and, and especially for me, that pertains to someone who's had some type of injury to heal from, and I've got several. Um, 12 hours of fasting after that, you're into autophage or, or cytophage cellular repair and so it's beneficial which means that i'm sitting in about four hours of autophage a day if you consider, and that's good because i need the repair if you consider that most people really eat until the point they go to sleep and eat. as soon as they wake up they wake up and they go straight to you know the kitchen or whatever and start eating they don't give themselves enough time to be in that fasted recovery state so I'm doing it now intentionally because I need more recovery um, desperately. So anyways, there's that. She said it could be not enough calories. And, and that's what that whole speech I just gave you was about. Secondly, it could be not enough fluids. Um, so the blood apparently gets thinner for heart attack, post heart attack people. I don't know. But she said you might need more fluids because sometimes your heart will get, it'll have trouble beating because there's not enough fluid in your system. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll start bringing a drink with me then when I go on my walks. And I'll sip a little bit as I'm going. Today it's actually a, uh, a sports like an electrolyte drink with a little bit of caffeine, just, just a tad. Because I'm not drinking much coffee, but I'm still drinking some caffeine sources, just not a bunch like I was. Um, and I'm drinking more solid water too, but I just hate solid water. Anyways, it could be less, not enough fluids. That's, that's the point of that. The third thing is it could be your heart can't handle the load, the stress load you're putting on. And that's something that I'd be worried about because that's what we want to do is avoid that and push up that my heart's capacity slowly and smartly, you know, smart, smartly, intelligently. And so she, she said she doesn't think it's that. And I told her, typically I'll look, in fact, I looked at my blood pressure before I started this walk and it was 120, no, 118, 83 and 55 beats per minute. So I always look at it just to get a baseline of where is it pretty much. And as soon as I come in from my walk, I'll sit down before I've had a chance to cool down and I'll check it. They do this in cardio rehab. They want to see what your heart is at after being stressed, like immediately after before you cool down. So I will do that when I get back from the walk. But I told her that the day that I hit the wall, if you will, I did check it and it was about 10 points lower on top number, which is systolic and diastolic. It was, it was about five points lower. So it, it went down on both sides. That's normally not the, the heart's response to stress. It normally goes up. So my beats were up. I want to say it was like 108, um, 78 and something like 74 beats per minute. And I told her about that, and she said she's not very concerned about that. She said if the bottom number gets below 60, the top number gets below 100, anywhere from 99 to 100, they'd be a little worried. So it hasn't been like that. So fortunately, according to her, I'm not over pushing my heart. So, and I don't want to, that's stupid. You know, I want to let it recover without really, really, really pushing it. Eventually I want to get to a point where I can push it well and maintain, you know, an intense level of, cause I don't want to get to a point where, oh, you can never play tennis again. Or, or you know, even if they tell me that, I, I doubt, I don't listen to doctors very well. So I doubt I'll believe it. I just, you know, I know that doctors are trained to look at the situation and assess it and give you their best answer. And I get that, I really do. And I respect them for that. They went to school years and years and years for it. But I know just so many stories anecdotal stories were for take Bruce Lee for example they told him he'd never walk again after his back aches injury and he not only did he walk again he made his movies that's before he had made really any of his big movies so everything can be overcome so I don't dictate what I'm going to do based on a doctor's prescription within reason um so it ended up that I tested a few more times with my walk and 
40 seemed to be too much. I had even dialed it back to 35 and I was closer when I hit that wall, but I still hit the wall. I didn't complete the whole workout before I had that wall. And again, it's not knowing what the wall is. I don't want to push it because I didn't know if it was my heart or what. But so I had then dialed it back to 30 minutes and within 30 minute time frame, I was good. I felt good. I made it home. I still had energy. So it quite possibly was glycogen and because I don't eat much um, carbs these days. I eat a lot of greens, a lot of vegetables and uh, pretty much whole foods for like a banana or oatmeal or um, beans. That's where I get my carb sources from. They're never sugary foods or anything like that. I'm trying to eat as whole food as I can. It's better for us. Lower in cholesterol. So I'm, I'm trying to fix all this naturally. Exercising is good. It, it raises your good cholesterol and helps you lower your bad cholesterol. Your ratio gets better. So um, I feel great. I've been telling everybody I do and it's not just lip service. I actually feel great. I've got two good things to report. I know this is long. I'm sorry about that. It's just been exciting to me. And, and when I say it out loud, it helps me really calculate and think about what's going on. So I had, I talked about my hernia. This, this channel has a lot of hernia videos on it. So if you've been following me for hernia, this is a hernia update. So I, I have opened the top and bottom lengths of my hernia. In fact, I'll make a hernia, I'll make a hernia update video, honestly, for the people who don't give a two shits about my heart attack. <laughs> Pardon my French. Um, anyways, I had it scanned, CT scan, and it doesn't need immediate surgery. But that's a funny story. So if you watch the update I'm going to give on hernia, this is a... I don't want to name my doctor because it makes him seem like it's a, a weird answer from him. And I like the guy. So I'll do an update. It's so, But so far, so good. He, he realizes that I had a heart attack. And so therefore, surgery is off the table. I'm on blood thinners. So he said, you know, you scan just to be sure it's all good and it's good. He said, it looks like it's still holding. Don't worry about it for now. But I know that it's getting bigger. I know that it's gonna need surgery. So, and I'm gonna insist on it. Not that I, I love to have in surgery. I don't wanna have surgery, but I'd rather, I mean, what, what we're waiting for is essentially it to get too big. And then I have to have like emergency surgery. I don't want it to reach that point. I want it to be like, I never have a worry. And uh, my tissues should be stronger now, actually. I, I didn't realize how bad I was damaging and weakening my tissues by vaping continuously. And it does something new that I found out. As, as I'm going through this process, I'm learning new things and figuring out stuff that I didn't know. And just wanted to willfully ignore and just be a, an idiot. I'm doing a ton better. So that on that side, that's good. Related to vaping and hurting your tissues, my um, knuckle tendon is also better I actually not only is it i played a gig and it never slipped didn't even hurt not only did all that happen for me but also um i have found a therapy or at least a, a little stretch to do that i think has helped the position of it so i will make another video about that too i'm going to make a video about the, the tendon a video about the hernia update um s separate so that people that care about that more than this could see that but it's, it's better. So all three things that are in my life causing me problems, which are my tendon for my ring finger, my hernia, and my heart attack, all three of them are better. My overall mood is better. Everything seems to be better, better, better. So that's what I have to report on this 14 minute long ass update. Sorry that it took so long. Hope you guys have a great weekend. This is Memorial Day weekend. Be safe. Take care of yourself. See you next time.